Hello, my name is Corey Pickett, and I'm a federal applications engineer at Keysight. Thank you for joining me for this short video that focuses on the effects of packet drops on your visibility network. Keysight has a long history of innovation starting from HP to Agilent and later acquiring Ixia in 2017. Today, the company is number one in test and measurement and a market leader in visibility solutions. During this video, I want to focus on our visibility solutions and specifically our network packet brokers. Most networks consist of a very complex infrastructure that several organizations need to manage. Those organizations all require data from the network to do their job. So each organization usually will deploy their own tools to collect and analyze the data they need. All of those tools need access to the same infrastructure data, but they have very different requirements. Network packet brokers solve the problem of getting the data to each of the organization's tools. In order for the tools to do their job effectively, they need to see all the data. We do this by tapping each network segment and sending the packetized data to a network packet broker. The network packet broker is extremely powerful and is able to provide many basic functions. It allows us to aggregate all the traffic from our taps and filter it before sending the traffic to the individual tools. I think most network engineers would agree that it is expected that if the tool does not see all the data, they can't accurately report on it. But what is not always apparent is that all packet brokers are not created equal. In fact, packet brokers and not the network could be the cause of the tools not being able to analyze the traffic at their highest level. So while the network infrastructure itself is performing optimally, providing all the data to the tools should need, the issue may be the packet broker itself. And it could be due to the packet broker's architecture. Essentially, there are two types of packet brokers. One based on a shared CPU and one with dedicated FPGA resources for each port. A CPU-based packet broker receives traffic from each port through the switching pack plane. Since the CPU is a shared resource, it processes serially on a first-come, first-served basis. All the ports are dependent on the shared resource of the CPU for processing. Ixia's architecture is built on the dedicated processing resources of FPGAs. It provides line rate performance for every output port to the tools, regardless of what combination of processing features are enabled. On a shared CPU packet broker, there's a bottleneck, and the bottleneck is the CPU. Most packet brokers can support the basic features, but it is the advanced features that separate the network packet brokers from a common switch. The need for dedicated resources become critical when enabling advanced features since these features are all computationally expensive. Most customers expect the packet broker to perform without packet loss, but due to these advanced features, 
in the inherent design, zero packet loss is not a given. Without dedicated FPGA resources, if these advanced features are enabled, it can cause the CPU-based packet broker to drop packets. So this is a high-level comparison of the two architectures. Keysight uses FPGAs and can enable multiple advanced features with no limitations. The FPGAs allow consistent performance regardless of the packet size. And Keysight does not rely on a shared CPU for these advanced features. Now let's move to the demo so we can see how this packet loss affects real tools. In the demo, I'm using a traffic generator to send legitimate traffic and malicious threats through the network packet broker. The packet broker is transmitting all the traffic it sees to the FortiGate IDS for inspection. I ran the traffic first with no packet loss as a baseline, then several more times with varying amounts of packet loss. The results are in the table um, inside the slide. So we're looking at the FortiGate IDS threat table, and we see the 10 threats that were detected with zero packet loss. So now we want to go and start the traffic with our packet loss. So we'll move to we'll move to our traffic generator and start the test with packet loss. So as our traffic starts to flow, let's go back to our FortiGate and refresh. And now let's go and change this to five minutes. So it's not detecting anything. Okay, there we go. So these are the threats that it's currently detecting. And we can see that several of the threats are missing. Right, or, or, and what's concerning is one of the critical threats or is not being reported. So let me do a refresh to see if it if it detects it. So still, we are only getting seven out of the ten threats. Um, several of the high-level threats and and one of the critical threats is not being detected by the IDS. What's most alarming to me is that these drops are not occurring from loss in the network infrastructure, but from the visibility tool. And most likely would not be detected because it's not occurring in the operational network. This would be chalked up as an IDS detection failure. Also, due to the seemingly random CPU bottleneck conditions, each time I ran the demo, the results were somewhat different. The threats and the number of threats detected vary. So why leave it to chance? Go with Keysight's network visibility solutions instead of a shared CPU. This ends the video. Thank you for watching.